Okay guys, let's get started and hopefully I can answer some of your questions from my original video. Here I have three cups of all-purpose flour. In weighted measurement, that is 384 grams of flour. And I'll put all the ingredients and measurements in the description below the video. So if you are not going to weigh your ingredients, I just wanna show you what I do when I'm just doing three cups of flour. I fluff up my flour that's been sitting on my counter. So you wanna fluff it up, scoop, and then just something to run along the top of the cup to get rid of the excess flour. And this is the way I measure a cup of flour. So before when you're trying my original video recipe and you're coming out with a more drier, harder uh, flour tortilla, it might be because the way you're measuring your cup, it might be too packed with flour, whereas you would need more water. Okay, next I'm using a third cup of lard you could use Crisco shortening. Today I'm using lard actually. Normally I use shortening. You could use oil or butter. Any oil of your choice, any butter, and yes, even butter flavored Crisco. Any fat of your choice would work. I'm also going to be using two teaspoons of baking powder. This is the brand that I use and I'm going to show you how I measure out my teaspoon when I'm not weighing ingredients. I'm just going to, again, you want to fluff up the powder and then just get a scoop, run it along the edge of the can to flatten the top, and that is my teaspoon. Okay, the next ingredient I will be using is eight ounces, one cup of hot water. And you want to have extra water on hand in case your dough feels dry. Again, another variable to change your dough consistency is if you have a packed cup of flour. So this is why I opted to redo this video and weigh the measurements. So you get sort of the same tortilla I'm making in the video. It'll kind of help you get the same result. Okay. And then the last ingredient will be salt. I'm using a teaspoon of, actually this is sea salt. Sometimes if I have kosher, I'll use kosher salt. Now if you are using table salt, that does tend to get a little extra salty because it's fine, so maybe scale back a bit. Okay, so here is my flour, and now I'm going to add the dry ingredients and give it a mix. And for those of you curious, again, I will put the brands of things that I use in the description below this video. The flour I'm using in this video and even in the last is King Arthur brand unbleached all-purpose flour. So again, I'm combining the flour, the salt, and the baking powder. And then I'm going to add the lard. By the way, the third cup of lard that I'm using is a packed cup. I'm just stressing that because I want to make sure that hopefully this will help you achieve the same flour tortilla. Okay, so into the flour I'm going to put the lard and then I'm going to add my 8 ounces of hot water. Okay, so while I continue adding the ingredients to my mixing bowl, I just want to stress again, if you do not weigh the ingredients, then there is a high possibility that your dough will not come out like the dough that I'm making today and that's okay just remember to adjust the ratio of water that you put to the flour mixture you might need to add more hot water because what you're ultimately after is a slightly tacky soft tender pliable dough so if you've added all the ingredients you've kneaded for five to ten minutes or put it in your stand mixer and the dough is kind of tough it's not really stretchy it's not soft and it's really not that tacky then rest assured in the end will probably be dry and hard so this right now this step is when you're kneading with your hands this is why it's important that i do like to knead with my hands you're going to feel the dough you'll know when you're mixing it if it's pliable soft loose and and, and smooth on the surface as opposed to not tacky dry and kind of tough 
and that's why you really want to knead with your hands. And I absolutely do understand if you are not able to knead with your hands, then by all means, use your stand mixer, put it on a medium setting, and let it go for five to 10 minutes. Actually, maybe in a stand mixer because it's more consistent, maybe somewhere like five to seven. So right now, I'm going to put it out on my work surface after mixing it around the bowl, just picking up any residual flour and things on the edge of the bowl. And once I turn it out on my, my work surface, you do not want to flour it. Do not flour your work surface because you don't want to work too much flour back into the dough. Again, that will also end up giving you a drier, less soft end result. So at this point, I'm just picking up any residual dough in the bowl. Now I'm going to turn it out onto my work surface. I have a clean counter here, not floured, and I'm going to knead it for five to 10 minutes or until the dough is smooth, but still slightly tacky. Again, the five to 10 minute kneading time is going to differ from person to person because the pressure you apply to kneading your dough will differ to what I am doing. And I'm really trying to work this dough. And also you will notice that I'm not cutting away as much in this video. I'm not speeding things up because I want you to see what I am doing. Hopefully it'll answer a lot of the questions you had in the last video and, and help you out when you decide to make this recipe. So if you <laughs> don't wanna watch me knead for five minutes, just speed up through the video okay so again I'm still working my dough turning it in on itself and pressing with a firm hand and I'm just I'm just working it I'm pulling and stretching and again I have not floured my work surface so if you do find that it's not a workable dough and it's just completely all over the place, yeah, you might wanna dust some flour, that's okay. But right now it's still tacky, it's still sticking to me, but it's staying together and that's sort of where you wanna be. If you find that you need to add more flour, dust it lightly and work it in slowly. Don't just add a whole half cup of flour and all over the place. Again, you're looking for a pliable, soft, tender dough. And as you can see, as I'm kneading it, it's sticking to my fingers and that's okay. That lets me know that it still has moisture, it's not dried out and it's pliable. Okay, so I am done kneading my dough. It is where I want it to be. And as you can see, it's still sticking to my fingers, but it's very soft and tender, and it's a lot smoother than when I started. So I am actually going to divide them into a dozen. By the way, you all know from my last video, I always end up with 14, and I'll tell you why. I figured it out. Because when I do divide it equally into 12 dough balls, I find that the dough balls are just too big. So that's why I end up breaking it down to 14 because I think it gives me a good medium sized dough ball to work with. So that's why I end up with 14, but you can do a dozen. Well, at least you know you get a dozen out of this. So I'm gonna show you the tuck turn motion and it's kind of hard to slow down and I have an awkward camera angle, but basically you tuck in dough on, on the underside and then it smooths it out on the top and it's just tuck and turn, tuck and turn. As you can see underneath it, it's a hot mess and on top it's smooth. So I'm going to go at full speed here. I'm not gonna speed it up. This is just the normal speed. I try to get things done. And again, if you don't wanna watch me do the tuck turn dough ball uh, method, just fast forward to the next step.
Okay, so this was my last dough ball. Now I'm going to place it in my bowl and I am going to cover this bowl with a damp paper towel. You could use a damp kitchen towel cloth. I find a paper towel works just as fine and I'm going to allow this to rest for 15 minutes covered. You don't want it to dry out while it's resting, which is why I cover it with a damp cloth. As always, I'd like to mention that the measurements and ingredients will be listed in the description below this video. I'll also include other recipe videos that you might find helpful. Okay, so it has been 15 minutes and I'm not tossing away this damp paper towel because I will use that later when I'm making my flour tortillas. Okay, so my cast iron skillet is starting to preheat. I have it at the number six setting on my stove dial. I'm not sure what it would be at your home and I don't have an exact an exact temperature, but you want to keep it on a medium to slightly high heat. I wouldn't exactly work with a flaming high heat because eventually you're going to burn what you're trying to cook. Okay, so it's time to roll these out. I'm lightly dusting my work surface with flour. Again, use a little bit at a time. You do not want to work too much flour back into the dough because then you will end up with a crunchy hard tortilla. So here I'm just dusting my dough ball, flattening it out, kind of giving it a head start. And now I'm going to use my rolling pin. Now I am not going to say what the proper technique is to roll these out. You do you. If you don't have a rolling pin, use a wine bottle. If you don't have a wine bottle, you know what? This dough is soft enough. You can probably pull it and stretch it by hand. So you do what you need to do to, to achieve a delicious flour tortilla. Doesn't matter what it looks like. And even if the shape is kind of wonky or just misshapen, it'll still taste good. And I also want to mention that as my cast iron skillet is preheating, whether you're using a cast iron skillet, a comal, or I don't know, one of those like flat skillet tortilla warmers that's like made out of Teflon, just adjust your heat. But I do like to get a head start on around two to three tortillas and hang them on the side of the bowl before I start cooking them. I think resting it on the side of the bowl also helps with creating that air bubble. Okay, so my first tortilla is done. I let it rest and now it's time to cook. And this is the thinner one. So again, I know this is redundant at this point, but I am not going to cut away too much on these uh, tortillas that I'm about to cook. And I'm just doing this so you can see how long it takes for the air bubbles and how long it takes me to flip it and kind of how I do it. By the way, I'm not a professional, so I do get a little fumbly when I'm trying to turn a hot tortilla in this pan. So if you have to use a spatula, go right ahead. Don't burn your fingers.
Okay, first one done, and now I'm going to wipe my pan because I did see some flour that came off of my hands when I put my dough into the cast iron skillet. This is why I keep that damp cloth, and it is not an oiled cloth, it is a damp cloth. So in goes my second one. I'm not going to cut away for this one either, so if you need to fast forward, go right ahead. <laughs> Now the only question I think that I probably could not answer that I have received before is altitude. If you live in a high altitude, I don't have experience making these in a high altitude, so I'm sorry I don't have any answers for you. Okay, so I am done. And I just wanted to show you the old pliability test. You can fold it, bend it, shape it, and it's not going to break. I hope you found this video helpful. And above all else, keep practicing. You will find your perfect flour tortilla. And I just wanted to rip into this to show you how the inside cooked. Okay, so I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.